the way to do it. Right now, in the wings, the greatest Shakespearean actor ever to tour, own a kebab shop. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for the moment. He's putting the final touches to his makeup. Meanwhile, here with total cooperation of LWT, thanks very much, y'all, guys, a special late night edition of the tabloid terror shock comedy, Hot Metal. You know, I, uh, I read in one of the tabloids the other day a story about a talking dog. That's <laughs> ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> It stars Jeffrey Palmer, Robert Hardy, and it's great. Well, you can see. Papers, papers, give us your daily news. Papers, papers, we'll tell you what's the news. Get by your paper! The church itself is of early Norman construction, lovingly restored in the 16th century with stone from the original quarry and incorporating a number of very fine medieval stained glass tableau windows. The giant wrecking ball will come in here, smashing the south wall to the ground. The site foreman tells me the demolition will be complete within seven days. Meanwhile, construction work on the new 57-storey rat-flat luxury apartments and animal experimentation block will commence at once for completion in the spring. Any local residents who are displaced by the scheme will, of course, be rehoused. Yes. I noticed that in the case of the bodies in the church cemetery, this involves being tied up in a swing bin liner and dumped off the pier at Margate. Very ill at sea, Harry's fine and noble tradition. Now, the exact Mr. Rathbone, this development hasn't exactly been welcomed so far, has it? I think it was... Prince Charles, who described it as a hemorrhoid up the rectum of Britain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he used quite those words, Harry. No, he didn't use the word rectum for a start. <laughs> I mean, not this lovely old church. Think what this will mean for your image, sir, as a responsible public figure who cares about our national heritage. You're absolutely right, Harry, to destroy this historic house of worship for the sole purpose of raking in a multi-million pound capital return on the property markets would be to abrogate my role as a lifelong socialist and friend of the earth. <laughs> we'll scrap the whole idea at once. And now, gentlemen, to the main purpose of this meeting, which is, of course, the launching of Rathaus International's brand new satellite, TV network. Transmission begins at 3 p.m. this afternoon. We've booked the Dorchester for the official opening ceremony. Look, if you don't mind, Mr. Rathbone, I really ought to be going. We're going for mass media coverage, Harry, with a host of top-notch celebrities. Rick Astley and Buster Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's quite a good one, actually. Jack Mike Gatting gets into an argument with Bruce Grobbler and uh, ends up hurling a beer bottle into his drawing. Oh, now, tell me if this fits, will you? Test days, toss face, jibes, parks, googly, at goalies, goolies. <laughs> oh, really? All right, scrub drop I'll then make it, uh, Jim Davidson in cabaret. That would give us a uh, gaggy grog, wax crack comic in crutch, Batman catches Joker mid wicket, ball by ball commentary by Greg Kettle. Oh, uh, by the way, Jack, uh, if you come sniffing around there later on, for goodness sake, don't you? Harry! I thought you were supposed to be at the Rat House International TV satellite launch at the Dorchester this afternoon. Yes, I dare say you did, Russell. Oh, yeah, they've got uh, Rick Astley and Buster Edwards. Yes, apparently the Yorkshire Ripper wasn't available. So they got Rick Astley instead. Oh, your charter, Swifty and Wit, will be so missed at that little gathering. You sure you wouldn't like me to get you a taxi? And no, Russell. Slip over there. I'd rather stay here and go through one or two little gems from today's crucible, if I may. Starting with this nugget of good taste. Roof crash disco toll hits 24. The headless teenagers were running around the dance floor like chickens. <laughs> headless teenagers? <laughs> no, of course not. How <laughs> oh, that dribble ever got through is a mystery to me. Quiet. Though for sheer rampant scaremongering of the flimsiest kind, Russell, it would be hard to top this morning's page five lead. Salmonella in cat food, it's official. Maggie begged by backbenchers banned cans of mega bug moggy meat. <laughs> Supermarket staff are demanding protective clothing to handle a tin of whiskers. So, Miss Green Perry, what? Yeah, it was meant to say thousands of cases of salmon had been found in cat food. 
You must think I have a brain the size of a walnut. Pet food manufacturers are going to sue us for every penny we've got. And what are we going to do to reassure them, Russell? Hmm? Any bright ideas? You're watching Ratsat Television. 24 hours of responsible, high-class journalism, completely free from managerial bias. And with the time at 7.30, we go over to the Ratsat News Desk and Peter Snow. As industrial action among nurses and hospital workers enters its third week, Mr. Terence Rathbone today announced a complete lockout in his own private hospital, the London Rat Health Clinic. While the dispute was on, he said all major organ transplants would be carried out by himself and the board of directors using a small <laughs> medical manual. Foreign news, it was revealed today that pornographic films and videos are being beamed into this country by an anonymous TV company using a pirate satellite positioned over the English Channel. The shock disclosure was made by Mr. Terence Rathbone, who warned that viewers buying his new Ratsat receiver dishes were in grave danger of picking up the pornographic material if they accidentally clicked to Channel 12 on their decoder boxes. Speaking at a special Ratsat promotion ceremony yesterday, he said, it was with unbridled horror that I learned how easily our subscribers could find themselves tuning in to this sexually explicit filth. Starting at 12 noon with horny hunters on the jet, and followed at 2 p.m. daily by Brenda and Bunty in bondage. Sport. Mr. Terence Rathbone today announced that his newspaper, The Daily Crucible, had agreed an out of court settlement for damages following a story concerning Mike Gatting and the testicles of a well known comedian. The exact terms of the settlement have not been revealed, but they're believed to involve a member of the paper's editorial team being violently whacked over the head with a cricket bat. But now the story that's dominated the headlines all week, the nationwide scare about salmonella in cat food. Mr. Harry Stringer, how much truth is there in these allegations? None whatsoever. Uh, the risk of infection is uh, roughly equivalent to being suddenly flattened by a falling meteorite. <laughs> no, this was just an unfortunate piece of misreporting. All our leading brands of cat food are, in fact, Germ free. Well, we have all 12 of these leading brands here in the studio. And I understand you've kindly agreed to eat all of them to prove that they're all safe. Would you go ahead? Yes. Right. Well, we'll come back to this in a second. But first, let's catch up with the weather and Francis. Yes, the weather. Still a settled and remarkably mild look across the country. Now, at 8 o'clock this morning, this was the situation. One or two rogue showers still across the far northeast of the British Isles. If we punch up the satellite picture, it looks... <laughs> at the moment, I think we can still see more of the same. Those large banks of cloud from the continent moving in, bringing quite probably a damp weekend for most of us. <laughs> I'm sorry to keep you waiting. I came straight from the clinic. Oh, a messy, triple bypass, I'm afraid. <laughs> I think we managed to muddle through. Mr. Rathbone, I'd like to draw Operating your attention. Operating theatres are the last bastion of restrictive practices, you know, Harry. Yes, but I think we should be discussing... What By the way, you did us proud on TV yesterday. You deserve a drink. Now, then, what's it going to be? A large gin and tonic or a saucer of milk? <laughs> <laughs> Where are we, Harry? We can't laugh at the pain and distress of others. Mr. Rathbone, forget my having to eat six pounds of crystallised glue with added rabbit. I'm here to talk about the broadcasting of pornographic films on satellite television. Oh, Harry. Harry, I, I, I was mortified to the marrow to hear the people actually snapping up our dishes on the off chance of sampling this odious orgy of naked flesh which is being beamed to the nation by persons unknown. 
Not quite as unknown as all that, I think. Mr. Rathbone, when we glance at one or two of these memos I just found in your in-tray. Uh, private memos, Harry. From Mr. T. Rathbone to the head of scheduling, Channel 12. Not sure it's advisable to put hot vibrators up against Terry Wogan. <laughs> Suggest we leave it till 8.30 and replace with King Dong, Lord of the Flies. <laughs> Flagrant falsehoods ever get into circulation to mischief in me, Harry. I Mr. Think... Rathbone, you may have kicked me around this building like an old plimsoll before, but this time I'm going to get my way for a change. Either you bring that poor nailed satellite down to earth by midnight, or this document finds its way into the hands of William Rees Mogg. The choice is yours. Good morning. <laughs> pleased with yourself? Well, it's not every day one scores a major victory for decency by cleaning up the airwaves of Britain. No, it's a great shame about that cat food panic flaring up again this morning. Flaring up again? What do you mean, flaring up again? Well, it's not your fault, Harry. Just an unfortunate turn of phrase, that's all. When you were talking about it on TV, Wednesday. Well, I said the risk of infection was about the same as being suddenly flattened by a falling meteorite. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What? Oh, so you obviously haven't heard the news. The latest headlines, a small building in the south of England was last night suddenly flattened by a falling <laughs> meteorite. The building, an 11th century Norman church owned by Mr. Thomas Rathbone, was instantaneously raised to the ground. Meanwhile, the so-called porno satellite that has been illegally broadcasting erotic films across northern Europe last night mysteriously went off the air. Experts say that all of a sudden, the satellite simply vanished, just as if it had dropped out of the sky altogether. <laughs> and now back to the main story. And a short while ago, Mr Rathbone choked back the tears as he spoke to reporters about today's tragedy. Gentlemen, the complete and utter destruction of this lovely old church by a freak lump of unidentified space debris. A one in a hundred billion chance, so I'm told, has broken my heart like a saucer. But rest assured, in its place will rise a giant erection <laughs> that will stand forever in its memory. All apartments realistically sliced. All are now to avoid disappointment later on. The apartment. Oh dear, oh dear. You know, Harry, I get the feeling that this is one of those days you'd have been better off staying in bed. Oh, really, Russell? Whatever makes you say that? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the alley can swing a back kind of that plug. Great stuff.